Hi there, yeah, it's Johan from Kef. How many of these things have I done now? Oh my god, I don't know. Maar toevallig vind ik mezelf in, ja, heel dicht bij het geboorteplaats van uh, mijn moeder in Utrecht. We zitten bij RMR uh, Solutions, Hi-Fi Solutions in Soest. Dat is zo een winkel uh, en kan je allerlei Kefs uh, van top to bottom zien hier en uh, uh, have a fantastic experience. En als u niet gezien hebt, moet je het Dolby Atmos toilet. Uh, zien en horen. Het is, het is iets heel aparts, maar ook heel leuk. Hey, dag. We vier zijn vandaag dus de eerste met Johan Kork, ambassadeur voor Kev. We hebben gevraagd of hij iets wil vertellen met zijn kennis over uh, iedereen Kev. <laughs> Als uh, misschien jullie allemaal horen, ik kan wat gek Nederlands spreken. Waarom? Ik ben Engels, maar uh, mijn moeder was uh, Nederland. Uh, maar ik was in Engeland geboren en dat was mijn eerste taal. En uh, uit Utrecht. Mijn familie komt uit Utrecht en uh, gelukkig zijn we in Nederland. En dat betreft dat... Uh, Nederland is het uh, ene land uh, ter wereld. You guys are really good at English. Thank God. Want ik kan het proberen alles wat ik wil zeggen uit te leggen in Nederland. En dan soms voor mij als Engelsman wordt het een beetje moeilijk en misschien een beetje vervelend voor u. Um, so als het mag is het goed als ik door in, uh, in het Engels ga. Yeah, it's okay? Good. Uh, my name's Johan Korg. I've been working for KEF for a long time. I'm really old. I've been working for KEF for, for nearly 30 years. Uh, what do I do? Hard to say. I kind of work worldwide and I'm in between all the departments. It's quite a big company now. We have different departments all around the world. But fundamentally, everything we make sits at the end of a chain. It's an obvious thing to say, it's a loudspeaker. So we make some really crazy expensive high-end loudspeakers like this. This guy owns a pair. Yeah, it's a real leafhaber territory. Yeah. And we also make stuff for on the move yeah and we also make betaalbare producten and practical products and people often ask us hey Kef okay you make loudspeakers what do your loudspeakers do what are they best for music or movies and the answer is simple to that yes <laughs> But everything we do at all levels is designed to be practical. The latest development from KEF is this, which is a whole new world. Opzicht, this looks like a pair of loudspeakers, but it's not. It's much more than a pair of loudspeakers. It's a complete, easy to use, but very sophisticated system. More about that later. This guy here is a guy called Raymond Cook, who was the founder of KEF. Um, he founded in 1961, a long time ago. English guy. He was a technical director, so a kind of engineer for the BBC. His big idea to start the company was how can I make loudspeakers better using the best technology of the time. What I mean by that is he used very, very modern materials. So very scientifically, new plastics materials, uh, new methods of onderzoek with a very scientific brain. And his big idea was, how can I make one loudspeaker be as technically close to the next loudspeaker as possible? which was very important in the early 60s because before 1959, 1959 was, there was a revolution 
in the way we listen at home. And yes, correct, stereo. Before 1959, we all listened on one loudspeaker, usually sitting in the corner. And suddenly, stereo, which is two slightly different signals to create an illusion of space. This is normal nowadays. But his fundamental principle was, ah, if I can have this as close technically to the next one, then the stereo effect is optimized and enhanced. That's a long time ago. But the self-same principle is still alive today in the way we approach. We are what we call a tier one manufacturer. What does that mean? Well, we are 100% in control of our own destiny. So right from the idea where nothing exists physically to the making of something like, what does it take to make something like this? A box, materials, drivers, electronics inside. Everything is done in-house, everything. The really expensive stuff, like this. These are 10,000 stuck, 20,000 euros a pair. Or stuff like this from our high-end reference series, or these are hand-built. One man builds one pair. There's not a production line. So one man gets all the bits and is responsible for... It's artisanal, if you like. So that's expensive to do, but it's about control. But we're a much bigger company now. We still are here, which is just southeast of London. Um, this building doesn't exist anymore where it's kept started because it was dangerous. It was made of asbestos. <laughs> yeah, it's true. We had to tear it down. Yeah, we're a little bit behind in Brexit Britain. No, oh, yeah, don't talk about Brexit. Sorry, I promise not to talk about Brexit. But um, yeah, um, what still happens there is making the real big crazy expensive stuff hand-built, the research and all the ideas acoustically and this guy, I hate him, he looks about 12 years old, right? He's the boss, he's the head of acoustics, he's Jack Ockley Brown, he's 34 years old now um, and we have a very 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 young team of engineers who are brilliant who we pull mostly direct out of uni university. It's quite hard to find. There are only two universities which give a course in pure acoustics. So if you've got a kid who wants to go to university and is sure to get a job, get them to study acoustics because they're in demand. Anyway, George, another guy in his early 30s. Great ideas and that's important to have the, the, the big ideas. So everything's designed there. Um, that's the main KEF factory where most of the stuff is built. We're fortunate, we've grown a lot. Shall we call most of the mir betaalbare dinge? Um, they're built here in this factory, state-of-the-art factory. Uh, where is it? Just north of Hong Kong in China but it's our factory. We make for other people. We make for Bose, we make for Marshall. Um, and it's not your idea of a Chinese factory. But we're, again, we're 100% into control. Um, of course, we are proud of what we do. The one thing, everything we make is at the end of a chain and the world has changed a lot. You know, from the days of, you know, just putting on your 78 record on a dry tafel, actually LPs are coming back and we're often asked, hey Kef, what is better, analog or digital? Yeah, yeah, it's just, it's, it's different. Huh? Uh, digital is really coming of age and there's lots, lots more possibilities. But everything we make sits absolutely at the end of a chain of delivery. Loudspeakers. We all need loudspeakers to hear reproduced music. 
I've lost it. Did you steal it? Waar is het dan, Mark? Ja, jij hebt het gestolen. Nee, je hebt het niet gestolen. It's one of my favorite things. Because I travel a lot. There's a little loudspeaker in that. It's pretty cool technology. Is it hi-fi? Mm. No, not really. But it's really handy. But it's a tiny little, very cool technology on that. So to hear reproduced music, it's just about scale. We always need loudspeakers. And these are just two receptors to hear reproduced music. We're obviously proud of what we do. Anything, any company will say, ah, don't listen to anything else, we're the best. Huh? Yeah, um, of course we're proud of what we do. We do quite well. We have a lot of experience, so in acoustics. But one other thing, um, we're quite unusual in marrying these two things. Really interesting design. You have to live with your loudspeakers. So very beautiful and thinking about design. But it's not designed for design's sake. Even this is unusual, but the way it functions, more about that later, is really very clever. So we don't just make a shape and then say, oh, we make it as a loudspeaker. First of all, it has to work as a loudspeaker. And that's in the high end. So we make real expensive stuff, medium price stuff, movie, movies and music, really high quality sound, which you can't see. All shapes and sizes, which you can hide. And that is becoming a really important part of the business. Worldwide, it's about over 30% of our business. More and more people are doing that. But the technology is the same. There's no compromise in the sound. And stuff for on the go or for your computer. Little stuff, but always with the same hallmark. The main, we have, of course, a lot of technologies. The main technology we use, and I'm not here to give a technical lecture, but the main technology is something called UniQ. This is actually two drivers. So this is a Hochtone, tweeter, or a mid-range or a bass mid. And this was first patented by KEF. We put it absolutely in the center. So the bass frequencies and the high frequencies come from ab absolutely the same point. Just like when I speak, low or high notes come from the same place. I don't have a little mouth here to make a little peeper and, and here a big mouth to make bass. It would be kind of strange. So it's a natural way of doing. We've been doing it for a long time. Here's a picture of the first one in 1989. Very good. But now it's in about 13th generation. This was very good, but had some weaknesses. Sounded a little bit like this. Did some things well, but it sounded a little bit like this. And generally over the generations now, it sounds very natural and we'll have a listen to that. But that's our job. Um, to look at it, how does it work? If you imagine, if I drop two stones, a little stone and a big stone in a pool of water in different ways, if I drop them in exactly the same place, you get waves going out very neatly. But if I drop them in two different places when the two waves meet, disturbance. That's exactly what happens with sound. It's kind of a cool analogy. We make really crazy stuff. <coughs> These are killer. We're about that big. And they're unbetalbar. <laughs> they're uh, 180,000 euros a pair. That's uh, a kind of sculpture thing. Do we sell them? Yeah, we've sold about 90 pairs. In the last eight years, not bad. We sold a pair last month. Yes. <laughs> uh, and of course, who, who can pay these? Who can pay for these? People with lots of money, of course. Um, 
but it's the extreme extreme. The other real high end is what we'll listen to is this product here where we make two blades. There's a bigger one which is deeper, a bit higher but a lot deeper with bigger base. And this is, these are also expensive, handmade. These are 20,000 euros a pair. That's before you start. Because you have to put electronics, to the engine, to power them. As this gentleman found out. So by the time you have a system with this, oh, 30, 40,000 euros, right? Double, double. Yeah, it's double. 40. Yeah. So that's the high end, the leaf heber territory, yeah? There's a lot of leaf hebers of cars. I'm proud of my Ferrari or my Maserati, yeah? I can still have a Fiat, it still drives, but uh, my Maserati does it rather nicely. And it's also very expensive. It's a similar, similar sort of thing. There is another reason for sticking on this. The research for this amazing product was started in about 2010 <coughs> and from a technical point of view everything we do everything is somehow related to this of course this is this is you could be forgiven for thinking oh this driver that's the same right it looks the same but behind the motor system it's it's it, it, this is yeah very different and it's all about dynamics and power and I'm not here to give a technical lecture but the principle is the same and it goes right down to about 400 euros for us of course we have less money to throw at it but there's consistency most people really like these more about this later some people go it's a little bit too much well if you're more traditional still beautiful but a more box yeah but actually exactly the same base drivers almost the same here but in a more traditional way and probably our most famous product i think it's true to say these are the biggest selling local cleaner boxer materials huh? um, these have been a smash hit for us for almost six years now still selling like crazy and here you see the elements of design i bought the white ones and my wife went ah oh, nice and then she saw these and she said why didn't you buy those those are better yeah always the man is always wrong huh? but uh no this is the element of design but still the geek part the guy's bit the technical stuff is absolutely just as important so it's this marriage of design and technical down from the almost heel duur fast onbetaalbaar zullen we zeggen prijs van een auto huh? down to echt betaalbaar we have something like this which is our series which is a whole series of loudspeakers a kind of junior reference where it's a whole row of possibilities which you can also make very very nice cinema with and we can have a little with mark we'll have a listen to that in a moment and if you're going to be super zonig <laughs> here yeah you dutch you're all very zonig aren't you yeah. huh? that's your reputation <laughs> anyway sorry um <laughs> q series uh from 450 euros a pair to about 2000 euros a pair so really but still absolutely related or what we call custom installation for the wall, for outside, for the ceiling, unsichtbar, a whole bunch of different solutions hang on the wall, but all with similar technology. Is the signature always kept in every speaker? That's a great question, absolutely. The one thing which is very important to us, it's subjective of course, if you mix and match, say you might have a set of these, around your TV, but you don't want speakers all over the room because it is a bit overdriven and, and you want to build your surrounds in the wall or the ceiling, the answer is yes. 
the sonic signature is the same and that's very very important for consistency so good question the future the future this what is this it looks like a pair of loudspeakers but it's a complete active wireless system what does that mean what can I do with it almost anything I just need two basics of life to get this going electricity and internet and everybody has that right um, there's a hell of a lot of technology but it's simple on its most simple level I can connect almost anything because it has all these inputs so you ask the question what can I, you know can I connect my CD player to it yes can I connect my computer to it yes can I connect a turntable with a for, yes uh, can I connect my TV to it yes can I play it wireless of course either by Bluetooth which is the most simple just pair my grandmother could do that right or over using Wi-Fi right so I pair these onto my network and this is just a touch panel of all the different inputs and I have you have an app it doesn't matter if you have iPhone or uh, Android you download the Kef app and you can play music either over your network from which sits on your phone or which sits on a hard drive somewhere in your house a connected hard drive or from the cloud wherever that is so this is the new way <coughs> but for instance streaming right um, those of you who use Tidal who, who, who use Tidal right why do you use Tidal and not Spotify what's the difference quality yeah 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 quality? yeah QA quality? yeah it has about seven times the quality of streaming from Spotify that doesn't mean Spotify is rubbish Spotify is fantastic for on the move yeah for example but also if I stream Spotify to here which is basically a low quality signal everything is upsampled to 19224 I'm getting really technical here is it real 19224 no but is it best practice yes so what I'm saying is this is a the latest way and a lot of stuff is going this way I don't mean to be sexist the ladies ladies love this because there isn't a bunch of rubbish in between and <coughs> it's really easy to to work so what do you want to hear Lady Gaga <laughs> God, I hate Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga. Here we go. Boom. Boom. And. Here we go. What soy? <laughs> but, uh. Yeah. Let's play something good. Rubbish. Rubbish. It's kind of. <laughs> right? the way something sounds if you start with real rubbish recording you can't make a silk purse out of something bad right this is like typical compressed but let's play something cool to show you what something like this can do are the sources different the one was streaming this one is from your no this is streaming from tidal more about that later don't look for me, I will be dead long ago. That's crazy. If I tried that with a normal system, <laughs> game over. <laughs> game over. Why is this? This is because it is full active digital. There's a ton of technology built in here. What do you care? 
you don't care. You just want to listen to your nice music and you want it to be easy to use. My mother could set these up in five minutes. Electricity, boom, 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 done. The difficult technology part is up to us. Let's show you something else. So what is built into these speakers? In each speaker, there are two Fasterikas, two amplifiers built in, very powerful. 200 watts for this, 30 watts for the tweeter. There are four DA converters, but I'm getting really technical, right? That's the bit which is up to us. So the technical part, is really interesting. So it's a combination that we have of all sorts of prices, all sorts of levels, all sorts of application, and more about that later from the RMR team. We'll have a little, little look at a movie. From easy to use, what does this cost? 2,300 2, euros a set. Poof. Done. Connect almost anything and use them in many different ways. So this is the future. Will we stop making normal loudspeakers where you build up your system and it's leaf heber? No, of course. We will still continue to do that. So if I play you that same piece of music which I played on these 2,300 euros and switch to these which just the loudspeakers are 20,000 euros a pair you buy them take them home what do they do nothing you have to have an engine an amplifier and all sorts of stuff. So by the time you have a system for this, you've spent 35,000 euros, at least. Mm -hmm. Because you don't put a little mini engine in a Rolls Royce. You, you, you have to have horsepower. In this case here, we are using a very nice amplifier uh, from, it's quite expensive, but it's a Norwegian company called Hegel which provides control to it. So if I play that same piece here, judge for yourself. If you ever reach the bottom of the sea. But you can hear what I'm saying to you. Ik hoef niet te schrijven. Waarom is dat? It's heel schoon. No distortion. Yeah, 15 keer so fail as D. Huh? But yeah. Huh? Huh? But yeah. In principe, before built, gaan we terug. Okay, it's just a question in English, just once more. It's just a question of scale, because if I go back to If you ever reach the bottom of the sea Don't look for The voice has similar properties, it's just a little down in scale, but that's the consistency. If you ever reach the bottom So, for example, in my house, in my house, actually, I don't have these yet. I was going to buy them last year, but I bought a Triumph Bonneville instead. So, next year maybe. But I have these expensive in my lounge, and then I have these in my study, and another pair in my bedroom, and another pair in the dining room. And I control them with a program called Rune, which can spray everything everywhere in full resolution and that is why people like Eramer exist to be able to advise you or to build you something fantastic like a whole cinema over to you. <laughs>